afternoon, everybody. So, I asked y'all questions on Instagram a few days ago, and I got some. So, I'm gonna make a Q&A today for y'all. And so the first one is, can you talk about your birth story? October 19th, um, 2017, I went into labor at home, um, and I was probably in labor for hours before I even knew that I was in labor. I woke up around 1 in the morning on the 19th, and I just had some like weird cramping in my stomach, and it was, wasn't super painful, but it was something I was not used to having and so I kind of just got up went to the bathroom while I was in the bathroom I was thinking and I'm like mm, hmm. like it's like five days before my due date everyone that I've talked to has said that you'll probably go late because it's your first baby blah 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 so I like didn't really think much of it except for the fact that the cramps were on a schedule and I'm like that's kind of how contractions work. And me being 19, just having turned 19 by the way, cause I turned 19 three days before that. I'm like, hmm, maybe. So I kind of just like got my phone out and like got the timer out on my phone or like the stopwatch and I was timing them. And they started out at like, I don't know, maybe like seven-ish minutes apart. And then they were getting more painful and so I just like took a bath and like sat in the bath and like as I was in the bath it started hurting a lot more and I was still timing them. During the time I was in the bath they went from being like seven minutes apart to being like five minutes apart to being like, eh, like three-ish minutes apart. Um, and I think at that point it was probably two or three in the morning. I finally woke. Um, my boyfriend at the time up at three o'clock in the morning and from there I'm like hey um I th I think um I'm pretty sure I said I think we need to go to the hospital um and he just like got up right away he I'm pretty sure he threw a few things in a bag I already had had my hospital bag ready and packed and basically everything in it but at that point like I'm like um I don't feel like I have anything ready at all that I need and so I'm pretty sure I just shoved a bunch more things into a bag I got my camera I got my phone um I don't really know what else but like we brought a bag um got the car seat brought all that stuff with us and got checked in we were in um triage for like maybe half an hour and they're like mm, yeah you're like seven centimeters dilated so we're going to admit you and get you into a birthing room and that was like crazy to me because I'm like you know this hurts but like it's I'm probably not like super dilated or anything like that um but yeah, so when I got to the hospital, I was seven centimeters dilated, and that was around four o'clock probably that we got there. So I texted my mom after we got to the hospital or when we were on the way to the hospital. But I'm like, hey, like we're at the hospital, I'll just let you know what happens. So I texted her back after I knew. I'm like, yep, I'm seven centimeters dilated, like baby is probably coming soon. I think they got to the hospital maybe around like 6.30. By the time I got there, I um, no longer even had the option to get an epidural just because it was so late and they're like, you know, it's not even going to help. So um, I think I got some ibuprofen, but I was in labor at home that I knew of from like 1 until 3. I woke boyfriend up at 3, we went right to the hospital, got there. Um, around four ish and got checked in and we were probably in the birthing room by like 4 30 probably contractions started getting really really painful um by like five o'clock to the point that i'm just like nope i can't do this like i'm gonna die <laughs> 
my boyfriend took a nap during that time. Meanwhile, um, I was not even able to sleep. I was in so much pain. My mom and my dad came in sometime before I gave birth. My doctor came in maybe once or twice just to check on me during that time. And the nurses were like, well, if you have the urge to push, push. And they were gonna come and break my water soon and even though my water hadn't broken yet they said if you have the urge to push push and so I did and I think like on the second or third push I guess is when my water broke that was kind of nice that they didn't have to come in and break it I went from like seven centimeters dilated to like nine and a half I would say in about two hours, maybe an hour and a half. Like shortly after that, they're like, well, you are 100% effaced, um, 10 centimeters dilated, and you should be ready to push. So um, my doctor was in on another more complicated birth at the time. And so I was probably pushing for maybe half an hour. I don't even feel like it was that long. Like in my head, it was like 10 minutes, but um, I started pushing and they were just trying to kind of wait for the doctor to come in, but um, that delivery ended up taking longer than expected. So I gave birth to my beautiful baby girl at 7.40 a.m. on October 19th. Um, and she was delivered by two nurses, which they did absolutely amazing. I was so, so happy. So yes, Miss Annabelle was delivered by two nurses. Um, she was born on October 19th at 7.40 a.m. and she was seven pounds and 12 ounces. So she wasn't super tiny, but she also wasn't super big. And um, I was so happy afterwards to know that I did not have any tearing at all. Um, I did throw up a few times in there, like shortly after getting to the hospital. I was just feeling super nauseous and I got like super hot and then super cold and it was just like weird, weird like hormones going through my body and emotions and whatever else. So I threw up, which was probably like the worst part of all of it for me because I hate throwing up, but for the most part it went a lot more smoothly than I thought it would so I cannot be more thankful as much pain as I was in I don't really remember that pain now like I remember being in pain but I don't like remember what that pain feels like or how bad it was so like I'm pretty sure that's why people have more babies they're like oh yeah I don't remember any of that so um that is kind of how it went but um Things got a little bit crazy after that, and they're still crazy, but we're we working things out, I guess. All right, um, so the next question is, what is your favorite thing about being a mama? Um, honestly, watching Annabelle grow every day and just seeing all the new things that she can do as she gets older is so amazing. She's so, so smart. She loves books. She loves just like sitting on her play mat and turning the pages in books, and that is so amazing to see for me. She knows some sign language, like she knows for her this is all done, because that's just kind of what it turned into. Um, she knows please, which is like this. Um, so basically anything that she can't like verbally communicate, I've kind of just been trying to teach her in some sort of sign language so she does still feel like she can communicate with me and she does really really well with that so that is fun to see but she's just growing so fast and she's so happy for the most part she's beautiful and smart and everything so just seeing her grow is amazing um another question is are you happy that you had a baby girl instead of a baby boy um yes and no like i always wanted to have a boy first and then have a girl afterwards and it's maybe just because I've never had an older brother and I always like wondered what it would be like so to see Annabelle with an older brother or like my kids with 
like an older brother i think that would just be really cool to see but no like i'm not disappointed i'm not like happy that it was a girl instead of a boy or like i would have been happier if it was a boy instead of a girl i'm happy either way but also like, i just had this feeling the entire pregnancy that she was gonna be a girl um another question time for siblings for annabelle yet um no i i would love to say i wish because honestly i do like if i was older and in a better place and in a stable relationship and all of that like i would say definitely but because um one i'm not really in a relationship and not really um i'll just keep it at that <laughs> i don't know how to explain my life right now but um i'm also in college um i am working um i live with my parents all those things are why i am saying no <laughs> um your dating life since being a mama um it's been trash <laughs> to um put it into simple terms um october i met someone who i had met before but i started talking to him and shortly after we started dating um but he also lived in minnesota so it was a long distance relationship but he did come and visit once which was kind of just exciting but things just didn't end up going well like we were living two different lives he was busy with work um i don't know it just did not work out and then a few months after that um I sort of got into another relationship which did not last very long. Like, it was great, like it was a good time, like I wasn't unhappy, but um, things just didn't work out and that's how it was and now I'm kind of just in a weird place where I have feelings for someone but also don't want to get too invested in another relationship so kind of just seeing how things go and if things go well then they go well and if they don't they don't and i'm going to try not to be disappointed but um i don't know it's been difficult for sure um hardest part about being a mom um for me in my situation i think the hardest part is um, just not having complete control over how I want to parent because I am so young people family not family people who are older than me and don't really understand that I'm as fully capable of being a mom as anyone else um, they like to kind of give extra input into my parenting that is not necessary and that sometimes I just do not really appreciate because I'm my own person. I'm going to parent my daughter how I see fit and what I'm doing isn't necessarily wrong just because it's not what someone else is doing. And so that's been the hardest part for me, I think. Um, another question is, who is more mischievous? And adventurous Annabelle or the puppies so um, as you guys may know we have two dogs that are a little over a year old now and um, they are crazy they get into some things um, they are messy and um, loud sometimes but so is my child so um, I'd have to say it's pretty equal the only thing about it is I have to worry about Annabelle whereas I don't have to worry about the dogs as much because they're not my dogs they're my parents dogs all right so my camera died so I'm going to film the rest of this on my phone and because the camera is in a different place on my phone I'm sorry if I'm looking more at the screen instead of the camera but um the question was who's more mischievous and adventurous Annabelle or the puppies um but them and Annabelle are literally like 
instead of two peas in pod, it's kind of like three. Um, Annabelle loves those dogs, and so she kind of helps them get into trouble a little bit, and they kind of help her get into trouble. And so, normally if Annabelle's awake and Lila is around, um, you can find them together. She loves Lila. They kind of get into trouble together, so I'm kind of curious to see how that's going to change um, as they grow up, because they're, like, obviously, like, the dogs are dogs and the baby's a baby, but they're, like, relatively close in age, so they're kind of, right now, they're kind of, like, maturing at the same time a little bit and learning a lot at the same time, and so that's been interesting, but, um, as for who's more mischievous and adventurous, I'd have to say it's pretty dang equal because they are just a pack. Um... Another question is, has it been hard making friends since becoming a mom? Definitely. Um, it doesn't help that I moved across the country um, to a state where I know absolutely no one. And I'm kind of going to college, but not as a traditional college student like most people are. So that's been really difficult. Um, honestly, like... I think I've changed so much as a person in the past year and a half that I'm not really in the same place mentally um, as most of my friends from back home. I would be tempted to make those same kind of friends or to want to make those same kind of friends here just for me to realize that those aren't really the type of people I want in my life. I'm not into partying, I'm not into drinking, I'm not into all of that, and um, a lot of college kids are, and a lot of, like, those people are that I would normally be friends with, and so, yeah, it's been really hard just because, like, I don't know what kind of friends I should have in my life, or, like, what kind of friends would be benefit me to have in my life and so I just haven't really tried much. The one person that I knew that lived around me is someone that I dated for a couple months and we were friends but it was like we were still in two completely different places in our lives. Um, so I'm still not exactly sure how to make friends as a mom. But I think as I get older, it'll kind of just happen and fall into place. Um, why did you move to Arizona? As some of you may know, my parents moved to Arizona when I was a senior in high school. My dad had got a new job um, at a company here that was just a really good job he couldn't pass up on and they've been wanting to move here for a long time and we're gonna wait till all the kids graduated high school but just decided to jump on it when they could and they moved here kind of just <laughs> because it was good timing and they didn't know if they'd have another chance while I was a senior, after they had moved, that is when I got pregnant. So, I felt like I just kind of needed a support system. And I didn't feel like I had that in Minnesota anymore. At least not the kind of support system that I wanted. My mom offered to have me and my boyfriend at the time come and live with them so she could help out after baby was born and so I could go to college and do everything well mostly everything that I had planned on doing which I'm still so so thankful for but basically I moved to Arizona to just have that extra support and because my mom was offering or my parents were offering I wasn't really gonna pass up on that because without it I think me and Annabelle would have a much harder life and I just wanted to be able to do everything that I could for her because my pride tells me that I should do this on my own, that I shouldn't ask for help, that um, even if I'm struggling, like it'll be better if I'm doing it on my own. But for Annabelle's sake, I just want her 
to have the best life she can have. And I know I can't give that to her by myself right now. So, just having that support system was really big for me. And not even for me, but for Annabelle more than anything. Because she deserves everything that any other kid would have. And I'll, I know I'll be able to give her everything she needs in the future. But right now, I'm just not in a place to be able to do that. And so, to have the extra support is everything I could ever want. Do you want more kids in the future? Yes, definitely. Um, obviously, like time will kind of determine when and how many and obviously with who, but yes. Um, I've always just wanted to have a big family and that was one of the hardest things about like getting pregnant so young and kind of knowing that my relationship with my baby's dad wasn't going to work is I wanted to just have that like that family like I didn't want my kids to have to share time or like split their time between parents and whatever else but um it is what it is and we are making the best of it. I'm making the best of everything that I can and I'm just moving on with life and Annabelle's coming with me. I have a little sidekick to come with me along the way but um yeah like I would love to have more kids. I'd love to just have that family that I've always dreamed of and having a good job and supporting myself and living in my own house with my family and that's just a dream for me so I will get there someday time will definitely tell when that is but um obviously everyone has dreams in the back of their head about like what they want their life to look like and everything and I just see myself being happy and married and with a family and more kids and all of that so yeah but um those are basically all the questions there wasn't very many but I figured a lot of them would take a quite a bit of time to answer so um I'm going to leave it at that I hope you guys enjoyed this I hope you um enjoy listening to more about me and my life I'm sorry that Annabelle wasn't in this video. She is currently taking a nap. But um, if you did like this video, just let me know in the comments. And I will be sure to make more videos. Um, request videos that you would like to see, honestly, of any kind. I will try my best to get to them. I still have a lot of vlogs that I need to edit and get up. So I will get on that. Um, it's just been busy between school and work and being a mom. So I'm trying my best. But I will do as much as I can, as quickly as I can. And I am so thankful for all of your support. And for all of you that are watching this. I love you so much. And I will see you later. Um, have a good day or good night. Wherever you are whenever you're watching this. Good night.